So you know how to use a pencil, but somehow your drawings still don't come out the way that you want them to with depth and that illusion of three-dimensional form. So in this video, I'll show you how to effectively build up your shading to create that sense of 3D form. Hi, I'm Emily from The Pencil Room Online, bringing you quality drawing tips and tutorials. You can check out my more in-depth classes on Skillshare via the link in the description below. So let's take a look at how to effectively build up shading for 3D form. I'm going to use an HB pencil throughout this tutorial, but you may have some other pencils. If you've got a 2H pencil, that could be useful, or a 6B pencil as well, just so you have a greater range of tones. But I want to show you how you can do this using just one pencil. So there's three things we're going to think about. The first thing is pencil control. So our goal when we're shading is to create an even coating of graphite on the paper that we can control. And you may have seen this in my previous video on shading tips for beginners. What people tend to do is move from side to side, and this is fine for flat planes. Anything where you want a flat surface, it's okay, okay to have those linear marks. But we're going to move in small circles, round and round, over top of what we've done. And this eliminates any direct lines going one way or the other. Another technique that you could try is a scribble technique, where instead of going round in small circles, you just move your pencil in all sorts of different directions. It's a little bit harder to control, it takes a bit of practice but eventually you fill up all of those little white gaps and there's no definite direction of the marks because you're going in different directions all the time. The other way we're going to create that illusion of 3D form is through the way that we layer our shading. So if you have a look at a curved surface like a sphere It'll be light in some areas, it'll be dark in other areas, but you can't tell where that starts and finishes. So we need to create that same smooth gradation from light through to dark. And the easiest way to do that is with layering. So I'm going to start with a very, very light layer of pencil using my circular movement. I'm keeping the pressure even, I'm holding the pencil at the back so that I've got a bit more range of movement. My hand's not stuck on the page, you see my hand is moving, rubbing against the paper. And I'm just going to show you how you can create that smooth gradation from one tone to another. So anywhere I can see a few gaps, or where it might be a little bit light, where it's uneven, I'm just going over top of those areas. But you can see I've got a fairly even light tone here. And I'm going to go over with a darker tone. I'm going to start in the middle. Not too dark. I'm not pushing too much harder than I was before. And I'm just moving that slowly, gradually out towards the outside of the circle. But my aim is to get this layer to blend with that layer underneath at the edges. So there's a second layer. Here's a third layer. I'm going to go even darker in the middle. Small circular movements. Work my way out. And as I work outwards, I'm going to lessen the pressure of my pencil so that I'm integrating this darkest layer with the layer beneath. And there might be a little bit of balancing that you have to do going over some parts where you can see the division between the two tones. So you can see how you get this gradual shading effect going from dark through to light or light through to dark just by building up layers of pencil. So let's have a go at drawing a sphere. I'll draw a quick diagram up here. This is what it's going to look like. 
So we get a nice even circle, you just use small circular marks like this. I'm going to have a light source coming from here. That means there's going to be a shadow on this side here. And this part here is going to be a highlight. So that's the part I want to keep light. This part down here is going to be the darkest. So I drew that diagram for you because I'm going to do this very, very lightly. One thing we don't want to have is an outline around our sphere. And I'll talk about that a little bit more shortly. So I'm going to very lightly sketch my sphere here. And this initial line that I put down needs to be lighter than any shading that I put in there so that I don't end up with an outline. This area up here I'm going to keep white and then everything outside that area, I could even draw it in very very lightly, you won't be able to see it, but just to give myself a guide, everywhere outside that area is going to be shaded a light layer of pencil, same way as I did here. So this will take a little bit of time, I'll build this up and then tell you when I'm going into the next layer. So I've got my first layer of pencil down. If I was using a 2H pencil, I'd be able to get that even lighter. You can see I've put the shadow in as well. So I'm going to build it up together rather than do one part of the drawing um, from light through to dark and then come back and have to try and match another part of the drawing, building everything up in layers together. So one issue I've got is from here to here, I don't have an even gradation. You can quite clearly see the division between where it's white and where it's light grey. So I'm just going to very, very lightly um, use my small circles to kind of like feather that line using as light a pressure as I can. And then I'm going to start to build up another layer of tone, maybe two more layers of tone. So it's going to be darker the further away it gets from the light source. Still using those small circular movements and I'll speed this through till we get to the next layer. So that's my second layer of shading. The shadow is going to work the same way as the sphere. It's going to get lighter as it comes further out. It's going to be darker as it comes towards the bottom. The sphere is lighter up here where the light source is. And as we get further away from that, it's going to get darker. I'm going to add my third layer now, same way that we did here. As I add the third layer, I'm going to start to integrate it into the layer that I've just added, that second layer. So they don't have any obvious dividing line between them. I'm starting at the darkest part this time and I'm just working my way up. So you might be able to see that there's a bit of a divide between this and this here. I might even make that a little bit more obvious. If we were looking at a curved surface, you wouldn't be able to tell exactly where it changes. So we're going to make sure that that's the same with our shading. And if that happens and you find that you've got that divide between one tone and the other, this is where you can use those small circles and the control of your pencil, the, the pressure of your pencil, keeping it really, really light to just integrate that top layer to the layer underneath it. So as I'm moving towards the lighter layer, the pressure of my pencil is becoming lighter and lighter until I'm barely touching the page. So that we can make that disappear. So 
So even though we're not drawing from an actual subject, I'm not looking at a sphere as I draw this, you can still get that sense of it going from light to dark because of the way that we've used those three tones. So we've used a highlight tone, a middle tone, and then a dark shadow tone. And it's those three tones that you need to create three-dimensional form or the illusion of three-dimensional form. And they need to be in the right place. So if I was to outline this with a very heavy dark outline, I'd be putting a dark tone in the wrong place because there's no dark tone up here. So while sometimes it might feel like that's the right thing to do to help define what you're drawing to make it clearer, if you're deviating from those tones that you can see, and if we were looking at a sphere we wouldn't see any dark line up here, then you're going to destroy that illusion of form basically. The one place where you might find a dark outline if you're looking at a sphere on the surface is underneath here where the base of the sphere meets the surface or the tabletop. But even that is quite soft, it integrates into the darkest tone that we already have. And it usually goes from thick and then it gets thinner and disappears. And then the final thing to do is maybe just to balance out a few of those tones. If I can see anywhere where there's a strong divide between the tones, I might need to feather off those edges, just with some very light pressure of my pencil. If I feel like it's not dark enough at the bottom, if I'm not getting that full range from highlight, mid-tone to shadow, then I can add in a little bit darker. I've got a bit of an outline around here just from my initial sketching marks and I'm going to rub that out because if the light was hitting that surface you wouldn't see an outline at all. What you would see is probably the background would be darker and if we shaded in all the background that would then define that, that top edge of the sphere. So what have we needed to apply to create this illusion of three-dimensional form in the sphere? We've had to control the movement of our pencil using small circles rather than linear movements. We've had to layer up gradually layers of pencil starting from light and then moving to middle and then moving to dark. And then we've had to just balance out those tones, maybe feather some of those edges using a very, very light pressure, controlling the pressure of our pencil on the page. So have a practice at drawing some spheres. It really doesn't matter if they come out a little bit wonky. What we're trying to achieve is getting that illusion of three-dimensional form using those three tones and layering them up from light to dark. See if you can get that nice soft curve where you can't tell where the tones change from one to the next. If you like this tutorial, please subscribe. I hope to bring you some more soon. And thanks for joining me. Happy drawing. Thank you.